Are you ready for the word? We're going to have a wonderful time today. We are concluding our series on encountering the Father. And so i got to start off with this because um, we're going to be transitioning from the Father to the Son. And there's a story of, uh, it's a Jewish story, okay? And uh, so there's a, a, a Jewish son tells his Jewish father after he was gone away for a year that uh, he just converted to Christianity. And so this Jewish father was very upset, and he calls his other friend, who happens to be Jewish, and he says, you won't believe this, but my son David went away for a year, and he came back, and he converted to Christianity. And the friend, who was also Jewish, said, well, you won't believe this, but my son Joshua went away for a year also, and the same thing happened. He converted to Christianity. And so they were so upset, they called their rabbi. And when they called the rabbi, the rabbi heard their story. And he said, you won't believe this. But my son, (laughs) David, he went away and he also converted to Christianity. And so the rabbi got a good idea, said, I don't know what we're going to do. We need to talk to God. And so they talked to God, and they told God the entire story of what happened with their sons. And God spoke back to them and said, you won't believe this. (laughs) Two people are getting my joke here right now. But my son went away, and he started Christianity. (laughs) Somebody say, encountering the father. Next month, we're going to encounter the sun. But let's finish this series off. Our theme verse for the month is Luke chapter 2, verses 48 through 50. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand him and the statement which he spoke to them. I must be. Somebody say, I must be about my father's business. So in this month of February, we are now concluding this whole series on encountering the father. And as you can see, we're going to encounter the father And then encounter the Son. And then we're going to encounter the Holy Spirit. We're going to move right into Pentecost. And it's going to be a powerful time in this house. Amen? So how many know this is all set up? And so we're setting this up. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's going to be a powerful time. And so we we, we revealed already that the Father, he is the first person of the Godhead. He's God the Father. Can somebody say God the Father? And this is not a word, a a, a name... Only this is a function. This is his operation. This is not just a title. This is how he acts. He moves in fathering. Fathering is God the Father's occupation. And he longs to be our father. And he also longs to father us. And he longs to protect us and nourish us. I'm just building some groundwork here. And and sustain us as his children. And he also, our father is here. Here with us to help develop us into mature believers in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what a father does. A father is a developer, and to develop means to cause to grow. Gradually, but continually, you are growing fuller and bigger and stronger and greater in who you are in Christ Jesus. In fact, Paul wrote in, he understood this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, but it is God, in one translation it says, who makes things grow. He's the one. He's the one who brings the increase. It is God the Father who causes your life to grow. And I want to make an announcement in Karis Church that 2024 is going to be a year of supernatural growth in your life, in your family. Somebody say, yeah. In your career, in your in your business. It's going to be a year of supernatural growth. What God said He was going to do. 
He doesn't leave it out all by itself, but he watches over his word to perform it in your life. And it is going to be a year where you're going to see growth on the left and growth on the right. God's about to, somebody's going to grab this, enlarge your territory, the place of your dwelling. And so this is a year of growth. That's what the Father does. He causes things to grow. And so in this series, if I could just recap for a minute, we talked about the Father as the source. Can somebody say he is the source? He's the source of our identity, who we are. He's the source of our stability, what we're anchored to. He's the source of our prosperity, what we have. And today he is the source of our destiny, where this is all going. And so we've had this key statement this month, and I want you to declare it with me if we can put it up. This key statement for the month about the Heavenly Father, it said like, we said it like this, and you can read it if you like with me. In this time, we're going to go further in our holy fervor for our Heavenly Father. Every righteous son and supernatural daughter will know a new intimacy, and we will see some mysteries become history as we meet the source of our identity, our stability, our prosperity, and our destiny. So in the month of February, we cry out, Abba Father, G-O-D, to the first person of the Trinity. He's going to meet us differently. Because let me say that, he's going to meet us differently. His healing healing is going to be our reality. His joy is going to give us the victory. His spirit is going to cause a new activity in our life and ministry. This is our Heavenly Father Litany. This is our Heavenly Father Litany. Can somebody say amen? One of the phrases in that is, he's going to meet us differently. Our Heavenly Father is going to meet us. He comes to, he's going to come to us in ways that we have not experienced yet. Some of you have experienced him as sustainer, as nourisher, as provider, There's an amen somewhere as protector. Some of you have experienced him as your guide, as your healer. Some of you might have experienced him even like Abram said as his friend. Can you imagine that God called Abraham his friend? And he didn't just call him his friend. God actually named himself one of his names as the God of Abraham. Oh, somebody's going to catch this in a minute. He said, my name is Jehovah, my name is Elohim, my name is Adonai, my name is El Shaddai. But let me add another name because you came along. And my name is the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. Now it's getting generational. And the God of Jacob. That's one of God's names. But we're going to meet him differently, and one of the things that we declared in this month was that he's becoming our daddy, Abba Father, G-O-D. Write this verse down, Romans 15. It says, we've received the spirit of adoption, whereby, by 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 which we call him, or we cry out, Abba Father. See, we've been adopted by the one who is here the one who is near, the one who's coming to make all things clear, the one's coming who's coming to wipe away every tear. He's the one who loves you unconditionally. Woo! Before you, while you were yet sinners, Christ died. He loved you unconditionally. How many know the unconditional love of God? We don't deserve the love he gives, but he loves us anyway. He's the one who cares, and he's the one that Jesus came to reveal to us as Abba Father, G-O-D, Abba, Daddy God, the, the God who is the source of our destiny. The word destiny, because I'm getting into this now, means purpose. Our God is a God of purpose. He's a God who creates everything on purpose and for a purpose. And he created each and every one of us on purpose. You're not here just to suck air and live life and get a job and get married and have some niños. And then just die. Now you're called 
with a purpose. You've been created with a destiny. And here's a revelation. Not every purpose is known to us. That's why I love prophetic ministry. Because prophetic ministry reveals the promises of God, but it also is a bridge to where we're going. We need a word. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And not every purpose of God is known to us all the time. But if you want to find the purpose of a thing, you don't ask the thing. You don't walk up to your car, to your F-150, and ask the F-150, what is your purpose? If you want to find out the purpose of a thing, you have to go to the mind of the maker of the thing, and he will tell you what the purpose is. And so here's what God's doing in this time. He's allowing us to find him in new and fresh ways so that we can discover our purpose, so that we can fulfill our destiny. And oftentimes, a lot of my problems in my life come from a lack of understanding my purpose. There's a whole lot of people there that without a pro progressive prophetic vision, they dwell carelessly. And they don't know what their purpose is. But when you know who your, what your purpose is, you can do what you are called to do with power and authority and confidence because you know that you know that you know that you know that God called you. Jesus understood his purpose. You look in, in, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, and the scripture says that the Son of Man was made manifest, the Son of God, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he may destroy, I'm preaching here, the works of the wicked one, of the evil one. His purpose, he understood his purpose. In, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, the scripture says that, that the, the angels talk, it says, and you shall call his name Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. Jesus understood his purpose. He had an assignment to fulfill in the earth. And when you're moving in your assignment, you are indestructible. And so Jesus came in bodily form to fulfill his purpose purpose in the earth what to destroy the works of the wicked one can somebody say hallelujah and to save his people from their sins to give us salvation can somebody say praise the lord and so the father was the source of jesus destiny but he also is the source of your destiny i got an announcement for somebody you're not here by mistake God knew that you would be created. I don't care how you got here. Woo! Because there's a lot of ways to get here now. But God knew that you were going to be created. And he had you in his mind. And he has an announcement for you in this room that you are his choice. Each and every single person in this room are his choice. You are his choice. He chose you. Even before the foundation of the world, you were in Christ. You were in him. And God has several purposes for your life. Not only did Jesus come in bodily form, but you are here in bodily form. You're here right now with a special purpose to fulfill a destiny in this time. And so I got an announcement for somebody up in here. You do not live an aimless existence. It's not, you're not moving around just by happenstance. It's not by chance. You're not just a shot in the dark, but you are here by choice. The Father's choice. Can I make an announcement? In somebody's here, and you are more important than gold and silver and diamonds and houses and cars and jewelry. Your promise is precious and your purpose is a very precious and that's what God has called you to. And you look around and you realize you're not a freak, but you're unique. Look around the room and see there's a bunch of unique people up in here. There's eccentric people, electric people, eclectic people, 
anointed people, chosen people, who are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who've been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You once were not a people, but now you've been made a people. You once did not have a name, but now you've been given a name, and you've been brought into the household of the family of God. Can somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. And so your destiny can either go one way, or your destiny can go another way. Boo. There's a courthouse in the state of Ohio. Is anybody from Ohio? The Stevensons are from Ohio. <laughs> Ohio State, the Buckeyes. And you go into Ohio, and there's this courthouse, this particular courthouse, and there's something interesting about it that when raindrops fall on the north side of the roof of the courthouse, the water drips down, and it goes into the, the, the Lake Ontario, which is right there in Ohio, and it flows into the Gulf of St. Lawrence on the north side. But if the raindrops fall on the south side, what happens is they roll down and they go into the mighty Mississippi River and they end up in the Gulf of Mexico. And just with one puff of wind, the destiny of a raindrop can determine by the puff of wind, it can determine if it's over 2,000 miles apart in which way it goes. You see, you got to understand that your destiny can go one way or your destiny can go another way. And that's why we need to be in the light as he is in the light. Because the smallest decision can push us in a complete different direction or the right decision. Come on, somebody. See, some people in this room, today is a day for right decisions. Ha. And so when we're talking about destiny, we need to understand there are, there are three things. And I don't think I'm going to get to all of them today. Um, in the second service, I'll, this is going to be just part one and part two. So you're going to have to watch the the second service just to get the second, the rest of this. So I have three different things that cause your destiny to go in the right direction. Are you ready? The first word is appreciate. Can somebody say appreciate? You got to appreciate your destiny. Appreciate. There's something about appreciation. You see, your destiny, as I said earlier, is unique. It's you. It's customized. It's specialized for you. God puts you in the family that you're in to live in the place that you have lived in. Come on, somebody. And the environment that you were surrounded in for a purpose. Now, it might not have made sense along the way, but the further you get into it, the more you realize that you are who you are by the grace of God. And you are where you are by the grace of God. There's some people sitting in this room right now. You shouldn't be here in the natural. You should maybe be incarcerated right now. You should be out in them streets right now. Maybe you should be six feet under by now. But by the grace of God, I'm talking to somebody up in here. Somebody has a testimony. Somebody has a story. You are where you are, and your destiny is unique. And what God wants to do is he wants you to appreciate the good, the bad, and the ugly of your story. God wants to teach us how to appreciate so we can maximize who we are and what he's called us to. The word appreciate means to place a value upon. It means to, it means to be grateful for. To appreciate means to be thankful for, to be glad, to be pleased. And sometimes it hasn't been pleasing your story, your journey. But guess what? You're here right now. 
and God is with you. And so to appreciate means that you have something to be joyful about. There's something to rejoice in, to appreciate. And we realize that when we begin to appreciate our destiny, when we begin to understand what God has been doing. Let me give you a verse, and I'll show you. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, let me give you the background to your destiny. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, somebody say in the image. We're created in his, of all of God's creation, there's no animal. And we don't come from monkeys. Monkeys are not created in God's image. We're not apes. Come on, somebody. We're created in the image of a father. And so anything else that would try and devalue God's creation of mankind is wrong. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. What a powerful statement. Male and female, two genders, he created them. 28. Then God blessed them and said to them, and here's your occupation, be fruitful and multiply. Watch this. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. See, this is your original assignment, Adam. This is your original assignment. Si assignment mankind to turn the earth into a garden. So God looked through the corridors of eternity and he saw you. Woo! And he saw everything that he created. He saw everything that he would create around you. And he said, I'm going to place you, I'm giving you a perspective here, in a ready environment. God did not create Adam on the third day. God did not create Adam on the fourth day. God did not create Adam on the fifth day. Why did he not create him on those days? Because he needed to create a ready environment so that when Adam stepped in on the sixth day, he would step into a place where everything that he needed to fulfill his destiny was around him. You see, you got to understand something about God. Woo! He's a God of timing. And he's a God who sets everything up. I, got, I want you to appreciate what God's doing. And he sets everything up. And so he does not put you into a place and not give you what you need to fulfill your destiny. He puts you in a place where you're surrounded. Woo! Where all of a sudden you start naming things. And whatever you name them, that is their name. Oh, there's power in your language. You gotta start naming some stuff over your children. You gotta speak over your children and say, You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and you're not beneath. You're going to be a doctor. You're going to be a lawyer. You're not going to be in the bottom. You're going to be in the top. God's called you. And you got to start speaking. You start start naming things over your marriage. Our marriage is strong. Our marriage is powerful. Our marriage is a model for other marriages. Our marriage is not going to be broken by the enemy, but we're going to be strong in the power of God's mind. I feel like preaching up in here for a second. Somebody say, appreciate. appreciate. See, when you begin to appreciate your destiny, you begin to walk into a meeting room and you talk different. You walk into the palace, you start interpreting the dreams of kings. Woo! You sit down to take a test different. Woo! You begin to move differently. You, you, you walk into environments, social environments, and business environments, and, and, and you come in different. 
One of the things I, I, I taught people is I'm, I'm a John Maxwell counselor. I teach people is when you go to an event and there's a whole lot of people in this event, oftentimes that's when you fall into insecurity because you're around this room of people and there's these people who, you know, they seem like they have it all together and they're walking around and they, you know, calling the shots and everything like that. And, and, and I teach people, I say, when you go to an environment that is uncomfortable, already have your script laid out. So when someone says, well, how are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. No, how are you doing? You know what? We're doing really good. You know something? Business, our business is on the rise right now. 2022 was tough, but we stepped into 23 and things got better. And now that we're in 24, all of a sudden deals are coming from the left and the right. And they're sitting here looking at you like, oh my goodness, they appreciate their destiny. You see, when you appreciate your destiny, you walk differently, you talk differently, you think differently, you move differently. You realize I'm a child of the king and I'm connected to a heavenly father who owns the cattle on a thousand hills ha, I might only have one cattle right now but my daddy owns the whole hill he didn't just he didn't just have the hill he made the hill he didn't just he didn't just own cattle he made the cattle that are on the hill that he made that's who my daddy is so I walk differently I talk differently I'm telling you we got to walk like we're children of the most high God cuz he is the most high and like I like to tell people there ain't no high like the most high so you can smoke and puff and drink and do things over here but guess what? There ain't no high like the most high. And so I'm walking around, and I'm walking around like my daddy owns this joint. He owns this place. And it's not cocky. It's, 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 it's confidence in who my God is. And I appreciate my destiny, and I, and I, and I, and I approach my giftings and my talents and my abilities and my ministry, and my place, even in the house of God, because I appreciate my destiny. I approach it differently. I approach it confidently. I approach it understanding that I am anointed with oil. And if there's an anointing on my life, and somebody around me has a burden, I understand that the anointing, lifts the burden and it destroys the yoke we got to walk around we got to go into starbucks or black rifle or the academy or hobby lobby or walmart or heb we need to walk around a little bit differently we need to not just look down and take care of our stuff we need to look up and look around and see who needs a word of encouragement who needs the love of Jesus? You got to appreciate your destiny. You got to appreciate what God has given you. That's why Peter and John, they went to the gate beautiful. See, I told you I'm not going to get to all three. They get to the gate beautiful. There's a man who's lame from birth, laying on a cot at the door of the church. Woo! And they walk up. And they say, silver and gold have we none. Or let me put it into 2024 vernacular. We're not here to give you the same old, same old that everybody else who's walking into the church gives you to appease their religious conscience as they go in to worship in the house of the Lord and ignore you. Drop some dimes. Silver and gold have we none, but such as we have. Appreciate your destiny. Appreciate your purpose. Appreciate your calling. Such as we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There's something inside of you. Rise up and walk. And the man got up and he went walking and leaping and praising God. 
That sounds like a song, Pastor Haley. Walking and leaping and praising God. He went walking and leaping and praising God. There's something inside of you that people need that was given to you by your daddy. Sin. Can somebody say sin? Sin marred our image. The clay was marred, Jeremiah 18, in the hands of the potter. It decayed. The word marred in the Hebrew means to decay, to crumble, to distort, to disfigure. The clay was marred. But one of the beautiful things about it is it never left the potter's hands. It was marred in the hands of the potter. You might be marred. Whoo! But guess what? You've never left his hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Whoo! We were marred because the image was marred because of sin. And because of sin, we needed a Savior. Can I preach the gospel? We needed a Savior. Appreciate your destiny. Appreciate who you are. Because of Jesus, he restored the image in his blood. By way of his cross, he restored the image to those that believe him. To those that receive him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God, to be restored back to the image. I need somebody to learn how to appreciate your destiny. You see, we're in a moment here right now where I got to make an announcement to the people of God in this hour that you're in the right place. At the right time, and you're the right person that God wants to use in this hour. If we could just, I'm going to close with this. Start giving me some keys. Thank you, Pastor Gabe. If we could just go around moving in appreciation, hmm. moving in the anointing huh, that God has given us, we could change cities. I'm looking at Colleen and there. <laughs> the news wants to say one thing. Looking at the earth. And the media wants to give you one report. But there's another report. God is, I got to get this. God is raising up a church in this hour who's going to impact the earth because they know who they are because they know whose they are. The gentleman who introduced us to Pastor Gary Hay was a pastor out of Albuquerque, New Mexico who introduced us to this house. His name was Steve Williams. He wrote me last night. I want you to hear this because this is important, what we're talking about. And he was talking about a prophet from Fort Worth, Texas. And he's a prophet who prophesied over me when I was 11 days old. He passed several years ago. He's 95 years of age. When I was born, I was born with a disease called Highlands Membrane. It's the same disease that JFK's son, Patrick, passed away of at 10 days of age. If you go to Arlington Cemetery, he's buried there between Jackie O and JFK. Same disease. And I was on life support when I was born. My lungs were premature. And the doctor called my dad on the 11th day, the 11th hour, and he said, turn off the machines because it's costing $11,000 a day and you don't have any insurance. He's not going to make it. 
When my dad got off the phone with the doctor, this guy, Dr. Prophet David Schock, called my father and said, the word of the Lord to you is, is that your son's not going to die, but he's going to live to preach and prophesy the word of the Lord in the earth. And within 18 hours, he will be breathing on his own. So my dad hangs up after that word, and he got a decision to make. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. See, i got to declare something. I, you've heard some reports in this last season over your body, over your job, over your finances, of concerning your children, concerning your marriage. You've heard some reports, but there's another report. It's not natural. It's divine. It's from the Heavenly Father. And He speaks over you. And He speaks over all that is yours and your family and your house. And He says, guess what? Everything that the enemy's meant for evil is going to turn for good. The Lord begins to speak and says, there's a hedge around you. There's a hedge around your house. There's a hedge around your mind. There's a hedge around your heart. There's a hedge around your emotions. There's a hedge around your body. I place a hedge of protection around you, says the Lord, and no enemy can come in. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against it. The enemy might try to come in one way, but he's going to flee before you seven ways. My dad had to make a decision. Whose report? Well, you see what happened. The doctor was wrong. And the word of the Lord was right. We don't live by bread. We live by the word. There's a word in this room. So this same man, as Pastor Steve wrote, and he said, I sat with David Shock, and his name was Shock. And whenever he prophesied, they said they'd give him the shock treatment. I mean, he was preaching one night at my dad's church on the blood. I actually have a copy of it in writing on the blood of Jesus. And it was so powerful that the power went out in the building. And he kept preaching without a microphone. And people were getting saved. People were getting healed. I mean, it was powerful stuff. I sat with David Shock, a notable prophet in our movement about 30 years ago, and asked him about the end time movement of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, I was about 19 years of age, and I was in a steakhouse in, in Oakland, right off of Higginberger Road by the airport with David Schock. It was just me and him. He was preaching at a church that morning. My dad said, can you take him to dinner? And he started talking about this movement of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you if you ever fell under the power of the Holy Spirit before, whether you get touched and you're gone. Well, this is in the steakhouse. He's talking. And just as he's talking, boom, I went forward into the mashed potatoes. And the glory of the Lord flooded the steakhouse. I couldn't eat. I was hungry. I was 19. I was playing basketball. And I had a ribeye in front of me. I couldn't eat it. It's like Jesus said, I have meat you know not of. Sorry, it just took me back for a second because... I asked him about the end time movement of the Holy Spirit. And I'll never forget David looking at me with his piercing eyes and saying, there are generations of prayers living in heaven for that will affect, that will affect what happens on the earth. He said there will be an outpouring of the Spirit far greater than what had been recorded in the book of Acts. He said to me, we have given our lives to see a glorious church arise in the earth. He said, God will not disappoint us. We're living in a time of accelerated reaping. 
there's a harvest appointed to us. We're living under the influence of generations of prayer that are still alive in heaven. And then Pastor Steve said to me, my prayer for Karis tonight is that your eyes would be turned towards heaven. And may your hearts be filled with heaven's expectations and atmosphere. Let the heavens anointing saturate you and your church tomorrow. The best days are in front of us. Jesus paid for what we are experiencing. Ooh. God wants to understand that like Esther, you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. You weren't born in 1942, or maybe some of you were, 1842, 1736, 903, or 402. You were brought to the kingdom for 2024. You're here right now to fulfill your destiny. There's nothing worse than unfulfilled destiny where one decision and the rain goes the opposite direction or the right choice at the right time and the raindrop comes and it goes in the right direction God would you allow us by the wind of your spirit to move in the right direction for the end time move that you want to do in the earth. Just lift up your hands because there's an anointing coming upon the church now by way of the wind of the Holy Spirit. It's a Pentecost wind. I told you where this series is going. It's going from the Father to the Son to resurrection, to the Holy Spirit, to Pentecost. By the time we get to Pentecost Sunday, the glory of the Lord is going to flood this house. If you want to know, you want to do the math, March 31st is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and then Pentecost 50 days after is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm telling you right now, let me prophesy. The glory of the Lord is going to flood this house because God is anointing His church for this hour who understand who they are and whose they are. We are children of our Heavenly Father. He's given us the power to become the sons of God. And it's time for the sons and daughters to arise. Even as Joel began to prophesy, in the last days, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. There's a prophetic mantle that's falling in this house. There's a prophetic anointing that's being released in Karis Church. I'm declaring this in the spirit right now. I'm declaring this in the spirit right now. That we're in a season. Again. And you see me do this, and I'm going to do it again. Where mantles are falling. It's time to pick up some mantles. We're not playing church no more. We're not just going through the motions of just having church services and singing songs and preaching cute sermons. But mantles are falling. Mantles are falling. The glory of the Lord is being revealed. And God's anointing His church. Pastor Alex, He's anointing middle schoolers and high schoolers in this hour to touch their generation. And so he's changing taste buds. He's changing appetites. I want you to hear this. He's changing the things that we used to feed off of and be entertained by because we've tasted and seen that he is good. I'm telling you, there's a spirit of revival that God's beginning to stir in this house. So somebody just lift up your hands because there's an end time anointing. There's a Holy Spirit anointing. Like Pastor David Schock began to declare, coming on Karis Church for this time. 
You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so just lift your hands to heaven. The anointing all comes. The anointing all comes. There it is. There it is. Just receive. Walk different. Talk different. Move different. Think different. Decide different. There's some places you can't go no more. There's some people you can't talk to anymore. Woo! There's some television shows, some websites, some social media that you don't need to have to touch anymore. God's purifying his church. The fire is falling, and with the fire, there's a refining that comes. The refiner's fire. And when the fire is turned up, ha, the gold all of a sudden begins purified because all the dross floats to the top, and God purifies his church. He purifies our desires with his fire, and he changes us for good. Are you ready? I'm going to ask you a question. Because you're about to step into a new anointing. You step out of this place and you go to Bubba's. And there's going to be someone that God's going to give you an assignment to talk to. You go out of this place today and you go walk your dog at the park. And God's going to use you to speak to somebody here today. I'm telling you right now, you're going to go to work tomorrow. And there's somebody that you know in your office is discouraged right now. God wants to give you a word of encouragement for their life. There's a revival that's on the, in, in, in the atmosphere, and it starts with us. Like Evan Roberts said at the Welsh Revival, he drew a circle around himself, and he said, God, start a revival and begin with me. Somebody say that, God, start a revival, begin with me. Now let me ask you a question. Are you ready to step into this? Are you ready for a move of God? I can't hear you. I said, are you ready for a move of God? Be seated, be seated, be seated. Let's start right here before we close. I know I'm a couple minutes late. Your roast won't burn. There's some people in this room right now. And by the way, I'm going to tell you, Keep on coming. Stay tuned because we're just putting our toes in the water right now. It's about to break out. We can't even, we're not, might not even get through the second song. And the Holy Spirit is going to break out all over this room. And it's not going to just a, a great big emotional time. It's going to be a, a glory time where God's power comes. Can you imagine people coming into the door, just walking through the threshold and their eyes were veiled and then all of a sudden the scales fall off just walking in the door. Can you imagine that, 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 that they just start singing the first song and somebody just all of a sudden gets healed of cancer. Lamps start leaving their, 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 their body and tumors start disappearing. That's what this is all about. 